Hi, friends, and welcome to another episode of The Low Code Revolution. I'm Scott Giro, and I'm joined by Sean MacArthur, a Principal Program Manager with Microsoft, or as I like to call him, the grandfather of healthy application lifecycle management. Uh, we're going to be talking about importing managed solutions and some behaviors that have changed that you may not be aware of. So stay tuned. Welcome to the show, Shan. How are you doing? Uh, Scott, nice to see you again. So good to see a friendly face. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've known you since, oh, well, it seems forever, really. I think we first met when you were with ADX Studios back in the day, and you were doing sessions with Microsoft and videos and loads of stuff. I mean, could you give a little bit of background of how you found your way from ADX Studios to Microsoft working on ALM in the Power Platform? Sure, Scott. So basically, as, as you know, I was uh, an ISV in the Dynamics uh, Marketplace uh, space here. So building uh, portal solutions for that ran on top of Dynamics CRM at the time. Um, so I was very much uh, an ISV and uh, we you know, went through the CRM4 era and uh, uh, onboarded all the way to CRM5 and, and then obviously all the way up to Power Platform now. And, and I was an MVP for seven years. Um, we met each other, I think, during that that time. Um, and MVP is an awesome program. I was in there for seven years. And then I lost my MVP status, but I did it the legitimate way. And, and Microsoft bought out the company and uh, I joined uh, Microsoft and I'm still here today. So um, Power Pages has gone on to a whole new product, um, but I've uh, retained uh, you know my interest in application lifecycle management, ALM, and I'm in Dataverse today and uh, uh, own the solutions in ALM space within Dataverse. Yeah, absolutely. It's quite been quite a journey. Um, and just before we start, it's intriguing me, your background. Um, do you want to give our viewers a little bit of a um, yeah, that, the background on what it is? That's a Route 66 uh, uh, reference. So last last year, I have, I have a friend um, that uh, wanted to spend some time riding with his uh, father, which is getting a, uh, a little older and not having too many riding seasons ahead of him. So we wanted to do an epic trip. So I decided to go with him. So it'd be three or four of us that went. And we went all the way from uh, Route 66 is like before the um, the big, um, you know, all the national highways have been built uh, built here. And what we did is uh, we traveled the classic Route 66, which isn't a, a contiguous uh, road anymore, but there's lots of different towns that are now off the interstates, um, but are, are still uh, have this old Route 66 that are still going through it. So we went through all these various towns and museums, and and uh, there's lots of uh, uh, murals and, and various sites to see all along that. So it goes all the way from uh, Chicago down to um, Santa Monica, California, and then we rode up back home to Chicago. It took about two and a half weeks to to do that, but it was an epic ride for me. I've never went on a, a two and a half week trip with my motorcycle only and just lived in hotels. So it was pretty cool. That does sound like totally epic. And isn't that like the whole storyline of the first ep uh, Disney Pixar Cars movie? I'm pretty sure. It is. Uh, although instead of the cars, I'm on two wheels. So... <laughs> You don't get yes. from rain, but thankfully we got good weather pretty much the whole time. We only had rain once, so. <laughs> awesome. Well, I mean, let's get back to actually what we're talking about. Um, so managed versus unmanaged solutions. That's been something that's been talked about for a very, very long time, right? Um, but I think where we are today, it is definitely accepted best practice to use managed solutions when you're deploying into your outer loop, your test, downstream, your production environments. Could you explain to our viewers a little bit more about this? Yes, it's uh, been an interesting conversation, and I've been on both sides of that that conversation for as well since it was invented in 2011. So um, it's... Uh, it is definitely intended that, you know, you've got unmanaged and managed and, and the way customers should see this is basically while you're in the development environment, you are making unmanaged customizations. So you are putting those unmanaged customizations in unmanaged solutions. You're, you're working in the unmanaged layer, the single unmanaged layer at any given time in the environment. And that's where you've got your unmanaged solutions. Um, if you want to integrate that with source control, you uh, export your unmanaged solutions, put in source control, and you should consider the unmanaged solution as equivalent to your your source because if you had to recreate an environment, you would import your unmanaged solution and you'd be back to developing it again. 
managed solutions are used to deploy to other environments. So you basically can service support your um, uh, solution with, with you know updates and upgrades and things like that when it's managed and you deploy that to other man uh, other environments. So a lot of people have made the mistake of thinking that oh you can choose how you deploy and that was the intent of it. And that's never been the intent. So. But I do recognize that in the early ages of solutions, uh, um, when I was uh, even over on the ISP side of life, it was difficult to use and it wasn't as smooth of a transition. And there's uh, quite a few missing features and inconsistencies that made it difficult to work with. So at some points in time, it was easier to work with unmanaged solutions. And I was on that side of the fence for part of my career there. Um, but <clears throat> now that the <laughs> solution system has really matured, um, this is really the only way that it's intended to be used. So and as you start to see, a lot of our investments, like pipelines and catalog and all this kind of stuff, everything is oriented around managed solutions. So um, I'm hoping that this this last vestiges of customers that are sort of sticking it out with unmanaged solutions, those are the ones that are probably do, using solutions for the last 10 years, um, and you know, start to consider, you know, reconsider that and, and onboard and, and use the full value of the platform. <laughs> <laughs> There's that last bastion of people sticking out using unmanaged. That's uh, we're going to get get to that point where everyone is on managed solutions. But one of the things is when you do go to import a managed solution, you are prompted with a number of different options. Yep. Could you give us a bit of a description of those different options and why you may use one versus the other? Sure. Here, why don't I show you? Okay, I've got my solution import screen. So I just staged a quick little solution, demo solution, nothing special in there. It's version 1.0.0.1. Um, and I'm going to, you know, if I imported it the first time, I would have just imported and been done. Uh, now I want to uh, import another version of that. So uh, can I unselect that and do import again. Why is that not working? There we well, go. because it's a demo, that's that's why it's not yeah. working, right? It, it, it goes without saying. <laughs> so I, I click my browse, I pick my solution. This is version two of this solution. And here's where the choices are going to come in. So as you do an import here, we recognize that the, plaque, the solution is newer and you have to open up the event settings and you now see some options on here. So this is where it all gets complicated. So. Eventually, my goal is just to import a solution period. That's all the only choice you need to make. Um, we're a long ways away from there, but but that's the the goal to, um, you know, where we're going for this is, is trying to get to the point where you can just import. But today, if you have a solution and you're bringing in a new version, you have to make a choice between basically upgrade or update packages here. So what does this mean? So um, change my notes here. So the the thing is that you really have two patterns here. You have upgrade and update. And the update is you bring in the new version, but it will not do a delete. So it's additive only. So it'll, it'll then doesn't add any additional layers, but it will update all your components, um, but it won't create any layers. Both of these upgrade things are using today the same pattern. And it's basically a two-stage upgrade where basically you bring in a new solution that has an underscore upgrades um, name to it. Um, and then it will complete the upgrade by deleting that so that, or deleting the underlying solution and then promoting or renaming that upgrade solution back to the regular one. Um, the stage for upgrade uh, allows you as a user to choose to upgrade your solution and stop. And then you can go back and do some data migration. Um, and then basically you know, so let's say you've uh, changed some of your data model and you want to be able to migrate some of your data to the new fields, but you have to do it before you delete the old field. You can stage for upgrade, do the data migration, and then complete your upgrade later. The upgrade option here, which is our default, and it's the recommended one today, um, is basically it'll do all that in one step, but it still uses the same mechanic. Right. So we've got, fundamentally, we've got upgrade an update and the upgrade pattern has got these two different uh, approaches the right. one where you have that holding a holding solution is a two-phase process and you do something in between so is there um what's the scenario where you would use that third option when you'd use that update option well today the best practice for me if you're doing like cicd or continuous integration continuous deployment is basically do continuous update. 
And the reason I say that is it's basically the fastest thing we have today. So we did some optimizations over the last two years where um, in, in the past, you know, we used to just import the solution. So everything was a new solution. We would just write those records back in the database, even if they haven't changed. Uh, and that took a long time to import a uh, larger solution. So we've done some optimizations and we now stash that solution file and detect on your new solution file if those components have changed. And for components that have not changed, we skip them. So basically now the update only does the work of things that have changed. So if you go into a fully automated uh, CICD uh, mechanic there is basically, you know, you continuous update. So every, every release and you do rapid releases, you just do updates and, and it's nice and fast because it's only chain, you're doing the work of things that have changed. Stage for upgrade and upgrade use that underscore upgrade pattern and that holding pattern. And what ends up happening is uh, in the platform, we see that as a new solution. So we install solution layers or component layers on every single component in the solution that are related to that uh, new holding solution. And then to complete the upgrade, we then delete the all of those layers on those same components underneath, and that takes time um, for that solution. And then we go back and rename that so, uh, upgrade solution back to upgrade and have to update all the component references to the right the right. That was very time consuming. So it's it's very time consuming. It takes about twice as long to do this, but it doesn't because of the mechanics there. We can't detect whether or not there was a change or not in, in that way. So it never got the performance enhancements that we had on update. So today I recommend using update changing soon. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later today, but the update is uh, continuous please as fast and upgrade and, and do upgrade occasionally. So whenever you absolutely need to delete a component, then do an upgrade. So Continuous update with an occasional upgrade is the, the preferred way today. Right. And that and that makes sense because I'm guessing because, you know, when you're getting that speed improvement of doing the update on a regular release cycle, you don't want to have to wait for the, the full time to all do all of that complex mechanics. And I guess the times when you actually need to remove components is probably less. And when you need to do something in between, you know, data migrations, it's, 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 le it's a less common exercise. So that totally makes sense. So briefly, before we talk about the changes, then um, the docs have talked about avoiding using patches yeah. for a while. So could you explain to our viewers a little bit, what is a patch? And why does the docs say to avoid using them right now? So patch is a mechanic that was introduced probably about seven years ago, um, where you could just put a one or two things that are changed in an independent solution and bring that into your production environment as a patch. And there's two purposes for that. One is to only, only scope the change just in that one component without rewriting all of your layers uh, in, for all components in that solution as well as it was fast. So it was the only way to achieve speed in the past. But now upgrade is just as fast as uh, patches. So the whole advantage of speed is just is now gone. Um, and uh, you know the solution system itself is a goal-seeking device. It, it basically will only do the work now where it's needed and it doesn't it gets the, the target environment to the point where it matches the in, inbound solution. So it's already just a, a goal-seeking device. It's not a, a matter of work in there. And the optimizations are are now to the point where patches are not uh, pr having performance benefit. Yet patches are very complex. They're, they you have to set up your development environment in a particular way. Those uh, the base solutions have to be staged in the correct manner and then locked for uh, in a patch generated from that lock solution. You then do all your work in that patch and then ship that into prod um, as independent solutions. Now, the thing is, if you're doing any integration with source control system, um, those are independent solutions. So they are different bolters. So now all of a sudden you've got multiple sources of truth of your system of all these components in there. And if you wanted to use modern branch strategies for isolation or feature development and just to merge between branches, patches can't do that. So it just makes it really extra complex for no net benefit. So I really don't recommend customers do and it's I find that customers make mistakes with patches more often than it provides them any value. And uh, if you ever have to reset your development environment, it's difficult to get it into a perfectly sustainable stage. Um, and then it also complicates how you service them. You have to go through an upgrade to complete that. Otherwise, you have these pending patches and you can't complete a delete until you do a full upgrade. So it's just not necessarily of any value. I love that. 
doing something unnecessarily complex for no net benefits. <laughs> well, it had its benefit in time, but we've removed it, but it's just no longer needed. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Kind of, well, it's very simple when you would put it like that. <laughs> so we, we've got like lack of, we've got the uh, simplicity, which is a benefit. And we've got the speed that is obviously a benefit um, of using that update uh, versus the upgrade. So could you explain to our viewers what's changing here? And what is the actual mechanism, perhaps the new recommendation that we're giving to people? And that's why we're here today, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So we are chain making changes to this upgrade pattern here. So this upgrade uses the stage and upgrade SDK behind the scenes. So it's a message that we added about three years ago that's been in the platform. Um, and it's basically in one step, the two, the, the staged upgrade here. So. We still use the upgrade pattern, but it's all done in one step. We import the solution and we apply it all in one, one SDK call, but it still uses the same thing. So what we're changing though, is we've basically changing the concept of upgrade to an inline update with the lead. So now you can import your solution, not have to create that extra underscore upgrade solution into for every component. We don't have to create layers for every component. We just update the component in line. And at the end of the solution, we're also going to delete the components that are not, not in that new version. So you get the benefit of an upgrade, which you're trying to seek is to basically change everything and delete things you don't use anymore. Um, will now actually be possible from here, but we're doing it in one layer. So that saves about 50% of the time right there, just only doing it with one layer because you don't need that second layer and the delete operation. And all those optimizations we did to skip on change components from the up update are also now um, uh, applied to the upgrade pattern too. So today the upgrade is a very long process. Um, and when we start to roll this out, um, upgrade will be just as fast as a patch too. Wow, that, that's, that's amazing. So we've got all of the benefits, the speed benefits of the update pattern, but all of the benefits of the upgrade in terms of the fact that it's removing those components. So you don't have to have that choice between whether or not you have speed or you have removing components. Exactly. That's, that's just amazing. I mean, I'm thinking back to so many projects and it, you, the complexity that it introduces, like having CRCD pipelines where you have to have a switch to say, okay, okay, this particular release is going to be an upgrade versus an update and removes all of that. So the recommendation is to always going forwards is going to be always use update. Is that right? Yes, it is. So I mean, I mean upgrade, upgrade, sorry. Upgrade, always upgrade. use upgrades. <laughs> yeah, it, I can always upgrade, but it's the stage and upgrade pattern. So why don't you share my screen again? I'll show you how you can do this from the command line and all of our CICD tools. So this is the PAC CLI tool. If, you, if no one's familiar with it, I highly recommend getting it. The nice part, the most loved feature for me is that uh, it self updates. So you just run it and a lot of update all the time and they're continuously every month bringing new features in here. So they've already brought in the feature that we need here. And that's the, you're in the PAC solution import command, you use the dash dash stage and upgrade. And this will do the import and upgrades that up upgrade pattern that you saw here. This is where all the new stuff is going to be. The import is holding is the old uh, upgrade pattern that's going to remain there and it's going to remain uh, slow. Um, but this one is going to be where all the, the speed enhancements are going to be. But you can do this through here. And of course, it'll be uh, surfaced through the, uh, uh, the DevOps tooling as well. The import solution already has it. As long as you pick this, you're good to go. If uh, you're using pipelines for deployment, it also defaults to this upgrade pattern too. So you'll get that all for free. Wow. So it's going to be across the board. You'll be able to use it in all the different places that you import solutions. And when is this actually rolling out? Is this available now or is this on a, on a timeline? It's, I think it's starting to release. It's in our uh, testing environments now. And I think it's uh, scheduled uh, in the next week or two here to start getting out to our, our first uh, uh, regions and state uh, geos and stuff like that. So it should be coming to soon to a station near you. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to have a new API because it's just new. It's just going to have new behaviors behind the scenes. 
I'm going to roll it out in, in phases. We have to be really careful because there isn't a preview capability of this. It's not a separate API. It's the same existing API. We've got to get it right. So we're doing this slowly and carefully and deliberately. And, and part of that is basically is we're supporting these certain optimizations in various stages. So you're going to see it come out um, over time. Like you're not going to notice it other than you're just going to benefit from a faster performance as you start to use it more. Um, we will have uh, new documentation, best practices, and uh, you know that'll show you when to use that and how to use it, so it'll be consistent with everything I'm, I'm talking about here. Um, and but it'll take probably say three or four months before we're done rolling it out and in its full glory, where all of our components um, are all participating. And basically, the net result is when it's done and your solutions are there. You should never see this underscore upgrade solution uh, in the middle of an upgrade. It'll just import and you'll be done. Um, but in the meantime, you may start to see, you may see some pending upgrades in the meantime if you have any components that aren't haven't been onboarded to the new optimizations. So, but hopefully, um, you just start to benefit by just watching performance uh, improve uh, week over week as we bring those in. It's like the C or CID <laughs> CICD pipeline in releases just suddenly get much, much quicker and everyone will be having a party. There's one other topic that everyone always talks about. Um, after I talk about these topics, they always ask me, what, what's happening with patches? Are you deprecating it? And, and no, we're, we're not deprecating patches. I'm just trying to project that you're not going to get much value for it. And for the additional complexity, why um, I would recommend not using it, but we're going to leave those APIs there. We're not going to break anything on, on your behalf. So all the existing APIs that you're using for patches or threat standard upgrades or stage for upgrade, all those patterns will remain working. Everything you submitted from ISV standpoint to App Source and, and our partner center will still work too. Um, these are just improvements that should be transparent to you uh, behind the scenes. Excellent. Um, thank you so much, Shan, for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I would hope perhaps you could come back on the show and talk about some other improvements that are coming in this area down the line. Oh, I'd love that. I'd, I'd love to help people understand how to work with dependencies more efficiently and easier. Um, we were actually just rolled out some some changes recently to the dependencies UX. I encourage you to, to look at those, but uh, I'd love to, to talk about uh, dependencies and how to unwind those and, and be successful as well as you know, how to do proper solution segmentation and environment planning. Those are the, the top and drivers and support ticket for us as basically customers that have gone down the wrong path and inadvertently. And uh, you know, the problem with solutions is you're usually successful up front and then find you've got problems later and, and winding those problems um, later is very difficult. So I like to help impart some knowledge and some best practices to keep people starting on the right tra track and stay there and not experience these issues. So. I love that. I love that. And I love, yeah, the focus and the, the uh, investment in this area. It's, it's just fantastic to see. Um, so if you would like to know more about ALM in the Power Platform, you can head over to aka.ms forward slash pp forward slash ALM. And there's lots of really, really great content that you can view. I think probably, Shan, you probably wrote a lot of that, right? Some of it. Um, <laughs> So uh, thanks once again for coming on the show. Uh, and thank you for watching. Uh, this has been The Low Code Revolution. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And so you can be notified of future episodes. So catch you next time.